Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I've been doing a television series review on the television series Ahsoka. <clears throat> Ahsoka came out in 2023. This was the first season. I, I would assume there's going to be more. It was not wholly bad, so I will probably watch the second season if, they, if, if and or when it comes out. This is an action-adventure drama. The plot is, in the Disney Star Wars universe... Ahsoka Tano investigates an emerging threat to the galaxy after the fall of the Galactic Empire. Uh, fair warning, you have to watch Star Wars Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels before you watch this. If not, you will probably be a bit lost. Um, this was essentially a bunch of member berries. It wasn't completely bad. Just a lot of member berries to carry it. It was nice to see C-3PO in there. But anyway, I'll get into the spoilers later. I normally try to do positive reviews of movies and TV series and, and you know UFO stuff and uh, historic hauntings, and unexplained phenomena, that kind of thing, because my political stuff is pretty harsh. I, as a matter of fact, YouTube won't even let me have it on, on, on there. I have to put it on Rumble. I rarely do a negative review on things. A mixed review is even more scarce. Yet here we are. Mixed review. Okay. There were good parts and bad parts of this series. The production value, special effects, and the plot were all good. They essentially opened the door for more seasons, which will not interfere with the Disney sequel bullshit. And I was not a fan of the Disney... Uh, sequels, the three movies they just put out, uh, they, they were absolutely crap. <laughs> but, and I'm going to apologize, my allergies are kicking my ass, so bear with me. If I make disgusting noises, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, they they opened the door for more seasons, and after watching the, the final episode of the first season, they have to have more seasons. They, they don't have a choice at this point. Uh, the casting was mixed. Rosario Dawson, they had some really good casting choices. Rosario Dawson is good, as were most of the other choices for their roles. One of the ones that I disagreed with was Mary Elizabeth Winstead. She was atrocious as Hera. She's a good actress, don't get me wrong. She's, she's really, really good. Very talented young woman. But she was wrong in that role. She didn't look like Hera. She didn't, you didn't get the feel of Hera. <clears throat> she would have been good in another role in that movie or in that series. But as Hera, no, it, it, she was atrocious. Um, I suspect that she got her role here because of basically who she's with. She's, I, I don't know if she's married or they're just boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever, but I'm not going to go into that because, you know, she is a good actress, but she was crappy for this role. Uh, Claudia Black is from Stargate and, uh, oh, what was that other one? She was in another one with Ben Browder. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, she was wasted in this role. Uh, she played Clotho, K-L-O-T-H-O-W, Clotho. <laughs> she was wasted in that role. She wore so much makeup that you couldn't tell it was her. And it was such a small part that, and, and don't get me wrong, it was a good role. And Claudia Black is an excellent actress, but she was wasted in this role. It'd be like putting, I don't know, John Wayne as an extra in a, I don't know, a 50s street comedy or something. I don't know. Him as a mime. John Wayne is a mime. Yeah, that would be wasted. Um... The writing was not woke enough to ruin the series, but it was definitely noticeable. The pace was slow. Character development was crappy. A little bit of a spoiler here. Sabine Wren was never a Force-sensitive person, a character, yet they forced that in there. They forced it in there. The first three episodes could have been done in one episode. So they wasted a lot of time there. 
All right, here comes the heavy spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. If you don't want spoilers, don't watch the rest of this until after you watch the series. So here we go. Any good adventure or drama has to have villains. Balin, Skull, and Shin Haki were good villains, but they required a longer run to justify their parts here. Since Ray Stevenson has sadly passed, he's the guy who played Balin Skull. This may be problematic. <laughs> okay. They can do a lot with CGI and like that now, but you know, I'm not I don't I don't want them to use AI or CGI to make Ray Stevenson. He's just he was so good. Especially in this role, he really played it well. Um but again, making season two and putting him in it's gonna be problematic because he's dead. He died. You know. Prayers for him and his family. <laughs> he was he was great. He was in a bunch of different movies. And he was a great actor. And he made this one this episode this series better. Diana, uh, Diana Lee Inosanto, I hope I'm saying her name right, is brilliant. She is an excellent martial artist, an excellent swords person. Swordwoman, swordsman, whatever. She is a great actress. She, the best duels in the series, involve Inosanto and Stevenson because they are actually trained sword fighters. The biggest triumph in the villain lineup is also the biggest failure, in my opinion. Lars Mikkelsen as Thrawn was brilliant. He, it was brilliant casting. He did the voice in Star Wars Rebel for Thrawn. But, so obviously they had to have him in here for this. But, you know, and, and nobody else could play that role. Okay? Nobody else could play that role. The failure comes in the writing. Thrawn evidently didn't want to stop Ezra Bridger, Ahsoka Tano, Sabine Wren, or any other hero he encountered. Thrawn is supposed to be, he had multiple opportunities to do so and passed them up to do something different. Thrawn is supposed to be a brilliant tactician strategist, and I lost count of the number of times Thrawn could have eliminated all of the threats quickly and efficiently. One of the ones that got me was they have hyperdrive and, you know, they, they have the ability to destroy a planet. But but apparently nobody bothered to pack any tactical nukes. And I know that's not really canon in the Star Wars universe, like in the films and the movies. In the in the books, they have what are called beradium charges, beradium warheads. They're they're like nukes, and they're, they're used in the books. The books are great, by the way. If you've not read any of the Star Wars Legends books, you got to read them. They're great. Evidently, Thrawn didn't have any Thai bombers on board his Star Destroyer either. It was crazy. Uh, those would have ended the threat quickly. Barring that, after the cargo was loaded, why didn't he just leave? I, I can see waiting to eliminate the hero's shuttle, but he didn't have to. They were busy doing other stuff. He could have just and left. Just and gone. Even if they followed him back, he would have been back in the galaxy. You see what I'm saying? It, <clears throat> it was a race at that point. He could have just left. I, I can see him wanting to eliminate the hero shuttle to keep them there forever, to permanently stop them from following, but once that was accomplished, just leave. He didn't. He waited around. Even if they get their ship repaired, they cannot follow, uh, because evidently the space whales had left. It, you got to see it to understand what I'm saying. But they they got Ahsoka Tano got there by use of a space whale, and they were they were. If you you have to watch Star Wars Rebels to understand that. However, <clears throat> even once the whales left, evidently the they can't follow. So he wasted valuable resources, Tie fighters, ground troops, time, etc. When he could have just left. It would have been much easier. Just leave. Don't say anything. Just quietly grab all your stuff and go. He wouldn't have wasted the 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 quality characters, the quality troops, the the you know that kind of thing. 
All in all, the entire series left Ahsoka Tano and Sabine Wren in the other galaxy with Balin Skull and Shin Hati, and they let Thrawn and Ezra Bridger return to their home galaxy. I don't know. I don't. I, that's that's a hell of a trade off. Was Ezra Bridger that important? I, I know there's an emotional attachment there, but Sabine Wren fought all that way to get to him, so I can understand her wanting him to go home. That's cool. But if you're stuck in the other galaxy, what does it matter? If she had gotten stuck over there with him, that would have been good for the romantic aspect. But it, it just it left a lot of holes. Without a season two, this season, this, this entire series, this season right now is a waste of time. But but if you, if they leave it as it is right now, the Disney sequel bull. Uh, uh, hang on. Where am I at? But if they leave it as it is right now, it will justify the Disney sequel bullshit by letting Thrawn start the First Order. That's one of the rumors that have been floating around. And I don't know if that's true or not, but it would make sense. <clears throat> In other words, it was a waste of time. It was a platform for member berries. Okay. I got my rant out of the way. Here we go. The cast. This had a really great cast. Rosario Dawson, David Tennant, <laughs> Natasha Lou Bardizo. Bordizo. I, I, I'm going to butcher some of these names, and I'm sorry. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Ray Stevenson, Ivana Sakno, Sa S-A-K-H-N-O, Sakno, Diana Lee Inosanto, Iman Esfandi, Hayden Christensen, Lars Mickelson, Genevieve O'Reilly, Paul Sun Hyung Lee, and Claudia Black. Um, for standouts, I'm, this is running kind of long, so anyway, for the standouts, all of the actors in this series were outstanding in every way. There are no bad actors in this. Okay, I want to stress that. Everybody here, everybody who participated in this was a quality actor. Okay, they deserve to have long and illustrious careers. However, Winstead was so wrong in her role, but it was not her fault. That was the writing. Somebody cast her in that role, and she was just wrong for that role. <clears throat> the writing was so bad in some areas. In some places it was okay, but in some areas, the writing is what killed it. The writers undermined the characters, and they kind of left you scratching your head. So everybody here is a standout, but again, the writing is what killed it. And that happens a lot these days, so... Uh, okay, this went way longer than my new my usual television series reviews, and I apologize for that. And if I made any bad noises, I'm sorry. I, so allergies are kicking my ass. Hope this finds everybody well. And, and watch it for yourself. Make up your own mind. I'm not telling you what to think. I'm telling you what I thought. You folks have a good day. God bless one and all. Clarissa Lowe, a historian from the future. Delmore Kane, a Civil War veteran turned outlaw. This oddball pairing faces a conspiracy of epic proportions spanning the centuries. If you like action and adventure westerns with a splash of science fiction and fantasy, check out my book series Drifters and their ongoing adventures.